And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're going to talk about three games. One about vampires, one about demons, and one about zombies. Let's start with vampires. We're actually going to do these games from best to worst. So we're talking about Blood Orders. Now Blood Orders is from a brand new studio called Trick or Treat Studios. I really like this company. As you've noticed in the past, of different masks on my show. They are from this company. This company has made these fantastic masks, and now they're moving into board games. I'm really excited about some of the licenses and games that they're coming out with. So this is the first one I've gotten from them, and in this one, it's a two to four player game. You're controlling these disgraced vampires. You have a bunch of old vampires working for you, and it's sort of a hand builder game where you're playing cards, um, and they give you different resources depending on what time of the day it is. But it's also simultaneous selection where you're going to pick where your vampire is going to go each round of the game to get more vampires to your cause. This all sounds good, and there's actually some pretty cool ideas with the game. There's a few problems with the game. The biggest one is that it's a little clunky. It's a little clunky for the things it does. Like you're picking, you're picking how your cards are played in what order, and you put down which quadrant of the city they're in on a token, then you reveal that token and you have to have it rotate in the right spot. And then there's a little bit more take that in this game that I would prefer. I mean, I guess it makes sense that vampires are going after each other, but I think this will appeal to some people. Um, I just found it a little longer than I wanted it to be, a little bit more take that in your face than I want it to be, and a little clunky. I, I, I like the artwork, I like the theme, I'm not a big vampire fan, but I like the theme of this one, but I'm looking forward to seeing what their next game is. This one I think I would give a 6 out of 10. Okay, now moving to zombies. Zombie Princess. This one here, I'll just start out with the rating, 4 out of 10. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of things I don't like about this game. So in the middle, first of all, the game is not that interesting, really. You have a board that looks like this, and in the middle, you build a little castle, and you have this ugly zombie princess in the middle, and then you have your characters. And on your turn, you put a tile out somewhere on the board that lets the, and rotate a tile that lets the zombie princess move, and you're trying to make the zombie princess go after other people, and then you're trying to get your key, grab your key, and then get to the middle. First of all, we've seen this game done so many times. These maze games and stuff's rotating and moving and they're sliding up tiles and whatever. It's just yawn inducing. Secondly, if the zombie princess touches you, you become a zombie and then it's your goal to make everyone else become a zombie, in which case no one wins. Ah. So if I lose, I'll make you lose too. I really hate that mechanism, but that on top of this really boring, stop making games with moving hedges and moving mazes. They've been done to death. I don't know. It's a pretty big box for a game I didn't really care for. But that pales besides my slight hatred for this next game, Hungry Little Demons. Okay, so the only thing I like about this game is I like the artwork of the cooks. It has demons. And it has, oh my word, this game's terrible. So at the beginning of the game, you set up a grid of cards. They're all different ingredients. You look at them. You turn them face down. Got to remember where you're going. And then you are turning over cards. You're moving stuff around to turn over cards to fulfill your recipes. But also, you're sending your demons to your opponents, and all you're doing is just messing them up. You like smash their table. And it, the game basically makes you do this. You have to as an action. You're going there, and you make bad things happen to them. And oh, let me read these things because I was like, I was mind boggled. So you can move a demon in someone else's house and then destroy a piece of their furniture. If you destroy someone's bed, you steal an ingredient from that person. Has to be an ingredient that's part of one of your recipes. Okay, great. If you destroy their chair, you send them all the way back to their house because they're moving around trying to collect resources. If you destroy their table, choose an ingredient and they have to get rid of that ingredient. So that, take that, not to mention the game looks pretty bad. I mean... There's the, the forest and the ingredients. It doesn't look that great on the table. But I will say this. This one here I would give a 3 out of 10 to. But realize I'm, I might be alone on this. I went to Board Game Geek, a repository of board game reviews. And every review there except one was a 10. One was a 9. The rest were 10s. So what do I know? Now, granted, all those people who gave it a 10 have not given any other game a rating. But again, 
I guess I'm just not on board with this one. I really wanted to like this game because I thought the idea sounded fun, getting ingredients, running your demons around, but it is a take that game that tells you to take that and then adds memory to it. It's just a mishmash of bad soup. So demons are worse than zombies, which are worse than vampires. This is the only one that I think I could see people getting, but even then, get a copy of the rule book and read through it before you do so. Those are three games. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. See you next time.